Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of Hudson for uh, Monday, uh, October 7th. If you could please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll please. Mayor Birchall? Here. District 1 Morset? Here. District 2 Yaku? Here. District 3 Bernard? Here. District 5 Hoggett? Here. District 6 Banslow? Here. This time uh, we take suggestions and comments from the audience on any issue that is not on the agenda. Chief Fry, I know, wanted to speak to the council. I just uh, want to remind everybody October is Fire Prevention Month. Uh, I'd like them to take a little time with their family and um, business associates to uh, practice their exit drills, develop their escape plans, and um, do their home or business fire safety surveys to make sure that they're, uh, uh, are, they do stay safe. Um, and uh, test the smoke detectors. Uh, along with your carbon monoxide detectors and certainly be sure and change the batteries uh, and lastly uh, take a moment to remember all those that all those firefighters that have given the ultimate sacrifice thanks thank you chief is there anyone else that would like to address the council on anything that's not on the agenda if not we'll move into the consent agenda Madam Clerk. To approve the regular meeting minutes of September 16th, 2013. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $1,101,822.82. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of four regular operator's licenses for the period October 8th, 2013 to June 30th, 2015 contingent on payment of any outstanding debt that is owed to the city. Additional <coughs> application information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the creation of a part-time administrative assistant one position as proposed and to authorize the city administrator to begin the recruit recruitment process to fill the position and to approve the updated position description descriptions for the administrative assistant one account accounts payable clerk Utility Clerk Account Clerk 2 and Receptionist account, account Clerk 1. To approve change order number one in the amount of $2,200 to Zappa Brothers for completing the mooring improvement project along the Dyke Road. To approve the plan commission, to refer the plan to the plan commission, the application of Timothy and Betty Caruso to rezone property at 811 First Street from R2 to Family Residential District to OFC Office District and schedule a public hearing for 6.55 p.m. on Monday, November 18, 2013. To refer to the Plan Commission the application of Richard and Janet Stout to rezone property at 483 Stage Line Road from R11 Family Residential <coughs> District to RM1 Multifamily Residential District and schedule a public hearing for 6.50 p.m. on Monday, November 18, 2013. To approve the issuance of a special event permit to the Hudson Hot Air Affair Incorporated for the February 7th through 9th, 2014 event and to approve a reduction in the required level of insurance from $3 million per aggregate occurrence to the $1 million and $2 million limits indicated on their 2013 Certificate of Liability Insurance. To place on file the quarterly report of the library director the Community Access Board Minutes of September 24, 2013, and the St. Croix EMS Commission Minutes of September 25, 2013. Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Yaku? Yes. Vanslow? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Morset? Yes. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Our next item on the agenda is from the Planning Commission. Final plat or final plat Red Cedar Canyon Co uh, North Cove Red Cedar Canyon planned residential development six one family residential lots. Mr. Darnold. Good evening. 
Planning Commission recommends approval of the final plat of the Red Cedar Canyon North Cove. This is six one family residential lots as proposed by Hans Hagen Homes with the condition the proposed street name be changed. Uh, originally North Cove, uh, the name that's now being proposed is Pinnacle Way. The reason we were concerned about using the term North, it has confusion with the village of North Hudson. We want to try to avoid that for emergency purposes. And the development agreement be executed prior to the plat being recorded. This uh, includes four one family lots on the north end of uh, Red Cedar Canyon, just west of the main entrance off a of stage line, and two additional lots. So this will be the final six lots that are subdivided within Red Cedar Canyon. They'll complete the subdivision and Hopefully, if in the next year or two, the build out of Red Cedar Canyon will happen. Questions? John, Mr. John Rask from Hans Hagen's Homes here to answer any questions Council may have. Oh, I'll move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Any questions for Dennis or, or John? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the certified survey map 3325 Heiser Street, one industrial lot and a dedication of land for Hanley Road, Rock Street and Heiser Road, Hanley Road, LLC U-Line. Uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of this certified survey map. The reason the Common Council is reviewing it is that they are dedicating parts of Heiser Street to north half of Heiser Street and then a small area of Hanley Road and a small area of Rock Street at the intersection of Hanley and Rock. Um, and also uh, there is dedication of easements for water utility and drainage around the east side of the U-Line building. Uh, the purpose of that is to provide <coughs> water connections between Hanley Road and Heiser Street. Uh, this was a requirement of the development agreement between U-Line shipping and uh, supplies and the City of Hudson uh, Plan Commission recommends approval. I move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is from the finance is consider proposal for downtown parking study and Walker parking consultants. Proposal from off Engineering and Walker Parking Consultants for a downtown study. Uh, Karen, you're here for questions. Uh, finance approved, uh, except for they didn't uh, feel that item one, the parking area location two, north of Pier 500 or the old Phipps lot uh, would be an appropriate place for parking. So that was excluded. And basically it's developed um, floor plans to show car counts and building dimensions provide a concept, functional design, locate entry and exit on the ramps, determine the number of levels and floor and elevation, identify stair and elevator. Um, basically, how many uh, are we going to have? Des uh, develop and estimate the construction cost for each location. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about for probably 15 to 20 years. And uh, uh, Karen, do you have anything else you want to add? No, that was perfect. Okay, I don't know if it was perfect or not, but. Uh, we've been talking about this for quite some time, and I think our folks uh, on finance felt that the uh, the north lot or the Phipps lot, the Phipps lot was an inappropriate spot for parking ramp. So can I ask a question about sure. area <coughs> seven with the fire station, mm -hmm. south of the fire station? If if we were to put a ramp there, maybe that's what the study will show. Is there enough room for the vehicles to maneuver? Uh, you're talking about the public is, it, are we, is this public safety yeah. lot i would think it would be behind the public safety lot like there would be it would the ramp wouldn't be <clears throat> i think that's on one that? of the things they're going to study they would study that. all right yep. um, because yes that would, that's what i okay all right john you have any questions thoughts comments <clears throat> well i watched a little bit of finance and i know randy was talking about we've been continuing to do this without um, following up on it in particular um, for the from what I've seen I've been to I guess one of the parking committee meetings from the Chamber of Commerce and just to be clear that downtown has two problems it has a daytime parking problem and a night and weekend parking problem and one of the things that Denny and um, 
uh, Kim were working on was a survey to find out who had what kind of capacity at, during the week and then nights and weekends. <clears throat> and the trigger was that we may have enough today, but will we have enough in three or four or five years from now, especially with the expansion of new businesses? So um, for my two cents worth, I think it's a great idea. And knowing that it may be not necessary till five years from now, but at least we would have an understanding of when that number would kick in based on actual uh, math problem, not just sort of guessing about parking. So I, I think that's kind of where the, you know, the science is coming into it. And with this parking study, that should help quite a bit. So that's kind of what I know. Okay. Well, I think we just, at the last parking meeting, Denny figured out we're sh short about 200 and some stalls mm -hmm. already. So we did a lot of the math already. It's just, so we currently do have an issue. I don't right. think it's more future as if, I think our concern Grant, I think it's good that we're looking at a ramp, and I think it's a possibility depending on how it gets paid for and the cost, but I think we have more of an immediate issue we need to find an answer to as well. Okay. So. And, and again, uh, any other comments or questions on that? Can you articulate exactly why you don't want a lot nor at the FIP slot? Just to blocks the view or vertical? I think it, I think Aesthetically. It, I think yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't look good there. It's unfortunate because it's a pretty, actually, good location considering future business. But yep, I understand. I don't, unless you feel like no, uh, no, I'm, I'm with <laughs> you. <laughs> but I think that's what the feeling was I, after we thought about it a little bit. Is that what you really want to put across the street from the uh, your premier park? And maybe you do. I don't know. The other thing that um, has been talked about, at least among some people that I know, is that the lower level of the what used to be the grocery store is now the fitness center is completely open and unused and i don't know if anyone's talked about that but i bet that could park a lot of cars down there just for you know okay. future reference so we uh, we have that on uh, item 12c we can talk about general parking discussions that i that's what i'd, I'd like to uh, bring those ideas up at that time okay sounds good any other discussion or questions if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item is the considerate purchase of a quick response vehicle for St. Croix EMS. Chief Eby is here to answer your questions. Um, again, uh, we've we viewed it in finance, and we have a 30, roughly a $31,000 bid from, I believe it was Luther? Chevy. Che yeah, the Chevy yeah. place. Yep. And for a Chevy Tahoe. And then there's probably... $9,000 worth of equipment outfitting. Yep. outfitting for that vehicle. And this is going to come out of the operating expenses of the EMS rather than uh, loans from the city of Hudson. Anybody have any questions? I heard um, finance law move for approval. <laughs> is there a second? I'll second it. Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 6C, consider request for the fire chief to utilize funds for the fire equipment reserve fund for repairs of the ladder truck. Chief Fry. Yeah, the ladder trucks had its annual inspection a couple weeks ago. Uh, several deficiencies were found it's unable to be certified again as a fire apparatus until these said repairs are corrected. Um, I recommend in, to take the, the re, cost of the repairs is $11,200, it's roughly, I uh, recommend to come out of the equipment fund. I'll repeat my statement from before. I'll move for approval. <laughs> is there a second? Second. second. Just a comment on, I, th I believe Chief Fry put in the budget for 2017. Am I got the year right for, yeah. a, for a new ladder truck or potentially a purchase of a new truck at that time? So, and, and we can kind of maybe expect to see some larger bills over the next few years to keep it going. So, it, it, overall, if over the its life, it hasn't really. I mean, we haven't seen these kind of repair bills. So as 25 years old. I was just going to say so. it's got to be 25 years old, isn't it? So, okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
uh, Public Safety Committee, consider Ordinance 6-13, Pedal Tour Quad Bicycle License and Regulations, Ordinance 613. Who's going to take this? I'll defer Mary? to Catherine. Okay, you'll defer to Catherine. Oh, okay. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I uh, prepared the ordinance. There is one um, change that needs to be made that I wasn't communicated or got confused. Anyway, um, in the definition of w one of these commercial pedal tour quadricycles is the term, um, it, we're going to delete non-motorized, both the person who expressed an interest in this type of business has a motorized one and some ordinances have non-motorized some have motorized so we just delete it whatever you know if someone it doesn't matter and that's consistent with what the committee wanted so other than that um, it basically provides a license sim similar to both the taxi and the pedicab for one of these tour type quadricycles. Um, a license for the business and then a license for the drivers. Both will be required to be licensed. Sets up some equipment requirements, insurance requirements, those kinds of things. It was essentially based on a Minneapolis ordinance. Um, requires an inspection prohibits advertising on the vehicle except for the name of the business that's operating the vehicle. Um, will not have alcohol on it. That was an issue at the last um, Is that a state meeting. requirement? Well, not exactly. It's, this is a unknown, it's just a new application or a new issue but the local city ordinance would prohibit it. That much is clear. And it's confusing under the state statutes. If it's motorized, it would no alcohol would be allowed. You can't have consumption of alcohol on a motorized vehicle, except we're specifically allowed by statute. For example, some of these limos. There's a specific statute that authorizes licenses to be issued to them. There isn't one for these quadricycles. The legislature has, for the last five years, considered changes to the law that would allow alcohol to be served on these. Those have not, I don't know, gone out, gotten out of committee or been approved, but just the fact that the state feels they need to change the law to accommodate service of alcohol on them says to me the state feels it's in violation of state law. And then I also talked with the Madison um, City Attorney's Office and they have, um, based on the same type of analysis, just decided no, we're not going to allow alcohol on them. So I think until, certainly under city ordinance and until state law, it's prohibited, and until state law is clarified, um, I don't think it should be allowed because the state obviously think it's thinks it's prohibited as well and I think that's I provided a memo to the committee and council should have a copy of it um, yeah. and I think that's what the committee concluded <clears throat> can I ask a question on uh, do we really well maybe we do prohibited routes I really wouldn't think that coming down Fillmore would be a very good thing to do. I didn't have anything <laughs> to do with, I mean, I, of course the committee needed That's to determine me. the roads. Okay. I, I think we should have those in, yeah, okay. because oh, yeah. the Third Street Hill especially it was where it started. And then yep. you started thinking, and actually I was about to suggest adding another street. Well, yeah. the one thing you can, I mean, really, what the ordinance says is they've got to be approved. I mean, that the city decides. It's not carved in stone. It can right. be brought back to the council for approval. But this is an ordinance, isn't it? But it, the, the prohibited routes are not set Part in the, the ordinance. Okay. No, That's, they're saying I they're subject to council approval. Okay. Right. Okay. So what we've given you is what the committee came up with working with I think uh, the police chief on what would be the prohibited routes as of now gotcha. and that will be a something for you to approve tonight but that's separate from the ordinance. Okay I, I thought it was part of the ordinance. I'd yeah. like the council to consider adding stage line on there from Carmichael what well, it is stage line only from Carmichael up uh, it's a single it's a single lane and with the roundabout now I think having a vehicle going 
10 miles an hour, whatever it is, is going to cause um, backup. So, and there's other ways to get to that area of town if they go there, like taking Hanley and cutting through. It's not like it's the only way to get to where they need to go. Let's let's go back to the ordinances. Does anybody have any ordinance issue? And then we'll go to the okay. Uh, no, but why wouldn't we just uh, do first reading and then include the, the prohibited roads? They're two different. Yeah, it's the the prohibited routes is going to be something yeah, that's subject to separate council approval. I did why? that so that you wouldn't have to change the ordinance and every an time ordinance someone thought and, yeah. a different route should be either right. inserted or deleted so it just allowed. like she's doing <laughs> i'm not changing the ordinance i was no, suggesting you're another adding route. To she's changing <laughs> the change. because the route. You, i think as i'm driving around town well we have a similar thing for our snow our sure snow right. routes and that are well, I'll move to suspend the rules for the ordinance consideration. I mean, don't get me sorry. I don't mind having a first reading if that's no. I don't. I, I second Randy. I think okay. we've beat this thing down at safety enough. I, I just think it would make sense to add it now, but whatever. Okay. Uh, we need a roll call vote to suspend the rules. Is that right? Yeah. Vanslow. Yes. Hoggett. Yes. Bernard. Yes. Morset. Yes. Yaku. Yes. So the issue is uh, now we're going to discuss the ordinance 6-13 and whether or not uh, folks want to approve that tonight. Well, like I said, we beat it down at safety okay. and the only change that we really needed was yeah. the one Catherine addressed. So. Motorized. The yeah. Motorized. We'll just delete that as part of the def definition. Is yeah. that okay with everyone? Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Do we need any uh, comments on the streets or we can just The only question I have is on Bayer Road, is that 12th and St. Croix or 11th and St. Croix? Should it be 11th and St. Croix? Uh, on Bayer Road, isn't that 11th Street? I think isn't that intersection 11th yes. and St. Croix? Yes. Okay. Well, this is, uh, what do we want to do with that? I what? think you want to, you want to approve it. Um, okay. Because change. then you'll have established the prohibited routes. Okay, so we want to change that to the uh, sure. um, 11th, 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 11th St. Croix. And I'd like to consider sure. a stage line added in there. From Carmichael to? City limits. City limits? So yeah, just, the just because it, it's a, it is a single lane, it's narrow, and, it's, you know, it's like having a bike go down the middle of stage line and everyone. <laughs> Do we have any reason to believe these are going to be anything other than kind of downtown he seemed to state that they're gonna go wherever if they're motorized I yeah. would think that they could uh, I mean they're not going to be motor I don't think they go 35 miles an hour though they're just kind of it, it's it assists in the pedaling yeah I, I think it's more of a downtown interest anyway I don't see them it could be though they're gonna come and pick you up Honestly, I'm know, more for, concerned about them going down 2nd Street and clogging up traffic than I am Road or stage line. Well, 2nd Street is going to be, I mean, it's, if you stop 2nd Street, you basically restrict them from. I'm just saying, I think that's probably more likely to become an issue than that more people are going to be affected by than a lone pedicab going out stage line. This is not a pedicab. No. This is no. that yeah. Um, the bus. Yeah. yeah. That's they, why I want, that's why I brought in the streets because they'll be going. Well, I think Lori's point, though, is on 2nd Street, it would be a, on a Friday night to have that thing motoring down 2nd Street could, could be a, traffic moves fairly There's slow. hours of operation, and I think they're done at 10, aren't they? 10, or something? yeah. Yeah. It's, but uh, people come home. But they'd be okay during rush hour. Well, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, no one's I, I thought we limited 2nd Street. down 2nd Street anyways these days. So we limited 2nd kind of Street long travel line. between... <laughs> I think they might avoid Second Street themselves. <laughs> just to you get would think thing. so. Just because they want they're pedaling. Well, I've seen one on I mean Grand Avenue sure. and yeah. West Seventh and St. Paul. Yeah. And Downtown Minneapolis. Yeah. I think when we were when we I'm were just when we were I'm just no. saying that when we were discussing that. the streets, we were looking at more danger issues versus. Well, I think one of the problems you get into when you designate some streets is, I mean, every street could get busy. I mean, that's the... Mm -hmm. We're talking, but we're looking more at steep hills and uh, the third street, like the third street hill is a perfect example. You, 
Do you really want that going up the Third Street Hill? Because it is narrow, there's no shoulder. That one I get. I see a lot of the rest of these as, I don't know if I'm driving one of those things, I'm gonna avoid these hills. You know, I don't know if we need to. But I don't know if you can control that because there's like 10 people on there pedaling and he. So why do we, are we concerned about them going up the hill, down the hill, both? I mean, I'm. Well, for example, the Vine Street Hill, I, I don't know if I'd want to see it try and. Going up that hill? Yeah, at, at the stoplight there. Or going down the hill. I mean, it's just, these were just concerned, we were just concerned due to the type of streets they are, not necessarily traffic congestion is more the type of streets. Okay, what's your, what's your thoughts, folks? Because it is gonna run in the I, winter. I don't too. think it hurts to have some restrictions on certain streets. I, yeah, it's not just a summer it, thing. It's more of a safety issue than anything. We're trying to yeah. prevent accidents. Okay. So the list that's there other than 11th and St. Croix, and then do you wanna add stage line? I don't care, I just thought I'd bring it up. It's just one of those things now with the roundabout and it's narrow and it's single lane and I don't really care. Okay. What everyone else thinks, it's fine with me. And so they can't go anywhere on Bear Road. Bear Road starts at outside the city limits, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, uh, right at the, just before yeah, it goes right under the bridge. Yeah. yeah, it goes uh, into the town. So you're talking about the hill that goes down underneath the underpass. Oh, we're, we're making this harder than it is. Right, <laughs> yeah. I agree. No, I'm just, that's why I'm asking. I, I don't think it was that difficult. I think it's just there. When we discussed it, we were, we were concerned about ice and conditions and other so, things. And <coughs> I say we leave rain. this list, and then if they decide that there's some uh, compelling reason that they need to go on one of these things, yeah. they could bring it up. Okay, is that a motion? Sure. <laughs> so with or without stage lane? Without, without is fine. Without stage lane. But it has to be 11th Street, change to 11th Street. Yep. On Bayer Road. Yes. I'll okay. second. 11th Street and St. Croix. I think you ride at your own risk. I don't think yep. you can legislate and <clears throat> tell people where to ride this or not. And I don't think they'll be riding in the ice. I'm, so I'm just, I guess I'm not in favor of designating these because I don't expect our officers to go out and do anything about it. <clears throat> it's no different than, than saying don't bike on Third Street Hill. Yeah. Okay. That's the only one I could probably support. Okay. All right. Any other? Do we have a motion and a second? We do. Is there any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Public Works, we have that uh, postponed. And then uh, unfinished business or other business uh, update on projects. Karen. Okay, the 2013 street improvement project, they're working hard south of 94. The milling is complete on Hanley Road, O'Keefe Gateway Area, Center Drive, and Crestview Drive. They're still doing some concrete work on O'Keefe uh, Gateway Area, Center Drive, and uh, Crestview Drive. Today they were out there putting the bituminous uh, surface course on Hanley Road. And then uh, the roundabout has been opened up and I heard it's working well. Okay. Yeah, the roundabout's great. And I, I'm saying that out loud and okay. <laughs> I like it. So Karen, when do we expect uh, all the rest of the streets to be completed with the overlay? on the uh, bituminous? Uh, well, first of all, First Street was probably gonna be pushed to next year. Yeah. And that's just a bonus if they can get down there and do some uh, concrete right. work. But uh, by the end of the week, they wanna be putting the overlay on the, the uh, gateway area. And then I can see moving to Crestview, maybe a week and a half. Hanley, Hanley's completed today? Hanley is, uh, they were almost done with it today. I'm not sure where they ended at the end of the day. Tomorrow okay. they're gonna move to O'Keefe and do what's called a wedge. So we're gonna see them putting a little bit on the edge and to the center, and then they'll come back and do a total overlay on it. Okay. And then Crestview will be a week and a half, roughly? Probably a week and a half away. Uh, they do like to work weekends now, but this uh, they were gonna do Hanley on Saturday, but due to the weather, they didn't work. Well, we got great weather now. We'd like to get them get it done. Okay. Any, any questions for Karen? 
Thank you. Um, item 12A, consider 2013 joint area proposed 2014 budget. Mr. Vanslow is going to make a presentation to us. As required it's by the library. As required by the joint library agreement, the library board needs to provide a budget to the municipalities uh, who are part of the joint library agreement, and so this is fulfilling that requirement. Um, the budget that you've got, and you've all had a chance to look at it, uh, has no wage increases included in it. The health care will now come down from seventy-five thousand to sixty-eight thousand just based on what we heard now from Devin and that there will be no increase. So um, I would note that that $68,000 only covers three people uh, and it's just uh, an unusually high uh, rate for three people. Um, according to Devin, we need to provide uh, the opportunity to take health insurance to those three employees. They have an option of either taking it or we can provide them with some other means of getting insurance. We don't know what that other means might be yet, but we're certainly looking at it. Our plan requires that anybody that's eligible be offered the insurance. So you can't just take a certain section of it. As long, take that, let me step back. Because the library employees by the library agreement are considered city employees. Anybody that's considered a city employee has to be offered the insurance if they're eligible. So we can't piecemeal certain groups off. If they weren't city employees, if they were employees of an independent group, then we would not, they could do what they wanted to. The uh, budget includes being closed for two days as it currently is. It also includes not paying $39,000 to the other libraries. Um, so that is not part of this budget. And um, the uh, services for uh, books and CDs and um, uh, published periodicals have been reduced. Um, so the potential deficit for the budget for the library would be about $47,800. A deficit um, according to what we've got right now and you're in, so you're including that you're correcting the 54,000 in the hole to the yeah. to so for the uh, health and the care insurance yep. okay. and with a 5% uh, increase from the other municipalities and including us there would be another thirty one thousand four hundred and fifty one dollars so that bring down to about sixteen thousand okay. dollar deficit um, with that additional uh, money, if we approve that, one of the conditions we could put on that is we'd like to reopen on Monday. We'd like to, at least I would like to see our library reopen that extra day what? for that money. If you're going to get another 35000 that should be enough to open the library for a Monday, isn't it? I, I don't know if this is the place for that discussion, but if we're still operating at a $13,000 deficit, I don't know that I would agree with that. Okay. Also, operations are... Right. Really up to the library. Well, board. but if we increase it above it, we have a right to say where the money goes. I believe the library agreement allows us to do that. I don't know that state law allows you to control how they spend their money. You can decide what, how much to and where they use allocate. it. I believe that's what our joint library agreement says we can do. So if we give them more money than requested, we can say where that money goes. So uh, I'll look at it. Yep, I think we should yeah. look at it. Because I think it's important to get that library open as many hours as we can. I, I think it would be good to open the library, but I don't think you can add additional deficit spending uh, to an operation. And if we were operating at a surplus or if we were operating at a zero budget deficit, I would probably be in agreement. But as long as you're at a deficit, I don't think you want to increase that deficit. Can I ask a question? Sure. Are we able, are we able to, this has been approved and you're just talking to us about it or is it's this been approved by the library board <clears throat> yep they asked for zero money from us yeah I was just curious if we have a deficit of 60 what what audio visuals includes I guess Th those are the basic services that a library provides Mary you know yeah, what is an audio visual what uh, the disc CDs those types of things but you're adding to it right I guess I was just wondering if we have that deficit why we couldn't just what doesn't matter it's approved well, not necessarily. I mean, Lori had brought that same question up, I think. Audiovisual is also the equipment to run, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also CDs and stuff, so maybe we, I mean, I don't know. I just think there's ways you, I mean, when I think of a library, I think, of, I mean, I don't know. If we're in a deficit, I think those are extras that we have to consider slimming back on versus books, but... 
<laughs> Sounds like that's out of our jurisdiction. I, that's well, what I, that's why I'm asking. If the library board approves, you can certainly <clears throat> discuss what you would think, but yeah, it's that's not why I asked within the question. your authority to tell them how to spend money. Right. Well, that's why I asked the question is what, what do we have? What We just get to look at it and we'll see a deficit and, and, and somehow figure out how to fund a deficit. I mean, is that No, your authority at? is to decide how much we give money a, to we give, give to, to the, the library. Operation. Right. Yeah. But if, if the library is running a deficit, then it's their and if job it continues, to fix that. Yeah. But, or, or the library eventually will run out of money. And then it gets thrown back on us. That's all. I just think that's a little twisted backwards. But that's So fine. to be clear, our contribution will be $283,037. Is that correct? That's the five percent increase. That's yeah. proposed. That's what. That's what's in the. Is, is that you reading that out of the budget here? Yeah. Yeah. That's what they currently get. Okay. And then I'm proposing we add another fourteen thousand. So it'll be yeah. over two nine. Okay. Yep. So it'd be like Seven. an eight hundred and fifty-two thousand dollar budget or something like that. Um. With well, the other municipalities. With the other municipalities, it'd be six hundred and sixty thousand. I mean, from the municipalities, part of the budget. Then they have the other library, 88000 from the library. So the total library budget for a year is, with all those changes? 900. $900,000? Roughly. And we still run a deficit? It's 838. That's the current, yeah. OK. There is, I mean, there's a number in here that's kind of, I find it sort of startling, but um, <coughs> just in terms of adult materials that are checked out, we check out almost 25,000 audiovisual materials. That's more than all the fiction, new fiction, and nonfiction books combined. Hmm. And I guess, you know, it's, it's a question I brought up when we met at finance, but... Um, I realize there's a lot of great, you know, historical and nonfiction DVDs that the library has that they're difficult to find elsewhere, and I think they have value. I, where I question it is, I guess, when we're carrying the same DVDs, the same what R-rated movies, PG-13 rated movies that you might pick up somewhere else at a. Yeah. Next I'm just wondering, is that the best use of funds? Have you guys talked about that? And I don't mean to, you know. I agree with you. That's what I was, guess I was asking about. Well, I mean, I remember my first library card as, uh, as a student in Madison. I didn't have a lot of money, so not only could I check out, you know, things to watch, but uh, tons of music, classical music. I mean, it's a... Uh, I think it's more than just movies uh, or whatever. There's, there, are, you know, who uses the library? What do they use it for? And and how it works? Uh, clearly, I would assume that there's some history here the, of use and and with the materials that get used there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would assume that a lot of this you could consider art or sure. that's part of the the. I would assume the uh, the mission of the library is to share that kind of information. And they they split out the music CDs. It's two thousand a year. <clears throat> But almost 25,000 DVDs. That's just a ton of circulation. And I'm just asking the question do we, you know, do we look at that collection? How do we, yeah, Linda, you know, do we prioritize? Linda has a lot of information which she uses to base her decision on what she buys, mm -hmm. what she gets. So if you want to get into some of the detail information, Linda's certainly got a ton of it. Well, we had a, yeah, a report, she, the quarterly report that we received from the library. Yeah, she, she keeps control. All information. Yeah, she keeps control of a lot of stuff that dictates or at least guides her in what they're going to provide for services. I just think it's good to get an idea of what the relative proportion of books to, you know, to other materials is. It's a question I can answer. Well, that fulfills the requirement. Of the that? Joint, that fulfills the requirement of the joint library agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you tried to get out of that quick. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Rich? Well, thank you for being on the <coughs> library board. I know you guys are working hard, and I, I appreciate the uh, 
the information going back and forth and the good communication that uh, you guys have been providing. At least for me, I've had more information and feedback from the library in the last six months than I did think in the last three years. So I appreciate that. Any other questions for Rich? Okay. Um, item 12B. And I can't. There we go. The uh, um, issue sheet uh, sergeant's agreement. Um, mm -hmm. Our sergeant's unit has some collective bargaining rights, but they don't have the right to go arbitration or mediation. So essentially, what normally happens is once the patrol unit settles, they follow suit. And that's the case here. So just be approving the agreement with the sergeants with the same terms and conditions as were approved for the patrol unit. No other changes. There's one minor language issue that has to be changed in the actual document, but has nothing to do with financial or. I'll move for approval. Second. Any questions, comments? And the back pay for the officers went out today. Do you have any questions about that? And then the sergeants will be handled as soon as we get the signed contract back. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next item is general discussion of downtown parking issues. Maybe we've already done that, but I just wanted to have it on here so that if you have any other questions or issues or concerns or, uh, Denny, I know that the, the parking, I have a question for you. Uh, I think that was completed and I know Mary alluded to that. It was, was it roughly 300 parking spots short, 280 or based on a, well, what was surveyed was the businesses downtown. Um, not all businesses are surveyed, but from what we could, um, <coughs> the information we could put together based on private parking that's being provided, based on public parking that's being provided. And if you take what would be our standard zoning requirement for off street parking, which is different than downtown, we use that to try to uh, quantify a need for parking and it came out that essentially almost all the vast majority of the private parkings on the south side of downtown Hudson and a lot of public parkings on the north side but it doesn't equal it out if we could better utilize private parking during off hours if the private op private property owners would be willing to offer that to the city we'd be able to make up some of our deficit. But yes, the, the number that came, we came out is about 200 off-street parking places. Now, so there's a couple ways, you know, we talked about parking on First Street. Um, I, I think we were talking about putting this item on the agenda for public safety, coming up here in October, November, talk about some of those issues. Another thing that I think we could pick up public parking, where underutilized currently is in the north lot on the east side we have permit parking and typically only about four or five of those 18 stalls are used on a daily basis now you go at night or you go on the weekend sometimes those stalls are completely full so if we move that to eight hour parking like we did in some of our other lots two years ago then you know we might be able to pick up or better utilize their 13 stalls perhaps so some of those things, implementing some of those changes may enhance the downtown parking, but I really think that's what we were trying to get to is compile some of the information, go to public safety in October, November, and then bring the issue to the Common Council. Questions for Denny? We appreciate the, all the work that you've done on that, Denny. I, I know you've been through it. A few well, there was times. a little summary I put together a couple of years ago that talked about signage we implemented the signage program. Yep. There were changes in some of the parking lots, just like I suggested for the north lot. We you know, changed some of the hours of parking. I think that better utilized some of the off street parking in our public parking lots. And there was also some suggestions on land that should be reviewed for potential purchase in that study also. That, that would be brought back as part of that discussion with the public safety committee along with the information that the Chamber uh, Parking Committee put together. So a lot of that information be made available. I, you know, I just wasn't real readily anticipating discussing this tonight or getting a cart before the horse, but 
yes, I think there's, there's, they're welcoming an open conversation on some of these issues. I think it's, it's as Randy stated in finance, it's time to decide if we're going to do anything or not. We've talked about it a long time. We'll try and make sure we have all the information, then try and make a decision on what's best. Another issue is on this lieu of parking. You know, the fund is there. You know, are we just going to sit on that money or are we going to try to utilize it? Again, you, know, you can't buy a lot of land on what little bit amount yep. we currently have in that fund, but it's getting started. But, you know, recognizing the revenue stream from that potentially, you know, where that could be something that could be utilized against uh, borrowing for your land or uh, parking improvements and so forth, so. Okay. Comments, questions, or any other items or discussion? I guess the only comment I have is I, I would like, while we're looking at the parking um, needs of the city, that we also um, look at the potential for expanding the downtown area as part of that mm -hmm. uh, because I think we have the opportunity to grow businesses in downtown at this point in time and uh, that would um, add to the tax rolls and also provide additional people coming into the downtown area to visit our businesses and make it only a stronger, uh, a stronger commercial uh, region. Okay. If I may regress for a second. Sure. One of the other things that was discussed that uh, was where to reconstitute the parking committee it really take a look, in my opinion. The parking issue is kind of the orphan issue of the city of Hudson. Nobody really wants to take. <laughs> yeah, yep, really. I agree. Rich reality. Does. I've been taking it. Yeah. But I mean, <coughs> but it's not, it's not something that's paid that close of attention to. Yep. And the discussion, I'm not criticizing. I'm, oh. no, I'm just, just being teasing. frank. I'm just teasing. But, you know, if, if a group that may include business people, general citizens, and members of the Common Council to look at the, this issue more comprehensively. Maybe that's something that probably would be coming out of this discussion also. Sure. I think that's a good, I don't, I'm trying to think when it was disbanded. I think I was a chairman of the parking committee when it was disbanded 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I think we're going to try and keep this on the agenda. Let's move forward with it and see, see where it goes. Okay. Uh, this time, uh, will any, uh, I guess I'm on for, uh, <clears throat> for mayor, uh, comments, uh, very similar to something. The yep. I'll get that, oh, uh, okay. I'll get that next. The first communications and recommendations, um, a couple years ago, we had some deals with city council people calling and I'm not pointing anyone out in particular, but calling Catherine and we're, we're getting bills from all over and, and. I think it's very similar with, with uh, Karen also. Let's go through committees. Let's not have any individual council people trying. You have every right if you want to talk to Devin or myself, we, if there's an emergency kind of a situation. But I don't think we should have six people or seven people calling our engineer or our, our city attorney for without authorization to spend the money. And again, I don't think it's been abused, but I think we've had a, a case where uh, we put our engineer and our city attorney in sometimes a bad situation with the public. So if, if, you, if you have that, please clear it through Devon or say we want to put it on the agenda, we can talk about it. Or take it through the proper either public works or through <coughs> public safety or those kinds of things. That's all I had on that. Uh, resignation of 4th District Alderperson Kurt, as I think you're all aware, I think you got the email that he has uh, resigned from City Council, effective immediately. That was on September 25th. My question to you folks tonight is we have two, op I think we have two options that I'd like you to consider. One is that we uh, look to reappoint someone until, because his term would be up in uh, April of this 2014, whether we wait until 2014 Sorry, or that. that we go out for bid and not bid. We go out for requests for people that want to do the Rich, quit playing with your computer. He's playing with Siri. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Do you have Siri on here? <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't even know we had Siri. Are, are, you, are you kind of bored already? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> so my question to you folks is, what's your thoughts? Do you want, do you want to uh, try? If you remember when uh, Rich, uh, when I moved into Dean's position or the mayor's position and uh, Rich 
we had, I think, seven or eight people that were, you know, we interviewed seven or eight folks to, for that position, and, and, and you guys pick them. Well, and this is, your, this is your deal. Pick the person for that position. Or options, or the other option is just you would leave it vacant yep. until April. Well, yeah. Here, here's a thought I, Dean, when Dean left, there was like a good year and a half left on his yep. term. We're already having to decide if we want to run again. I mean, we got our paperwork, we have to make a decision soon. So it's kind of like, it's gonna be open for anyone who wants to run shortly. So I don't know if we necessarily wanna appoint someone just to have them have to. Well, there's two issues to that. It's uh, if you figure out it's five, six months with the seat being empty. Uh, the good thing from my perspective, there's not gonna be very many tie votes, so I don't have to worry <laughs> about a tiebreaker. But, uh, you know, again, we've got that district sitting not being represented for five months at yeah. a time. Yeah. So that's, that's a long negative time. concern. And the other issue potentially would be quorum. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long time. Because if, you know, right. if there are two of you missing when there's six, we can still meet. If there's two of you missing, when Lori, seven. you look like you wanted to say something. Well, I mean, I guess I was thinking, too, we're getting fairly close to election time. Yep. And I guess I don't see it as a district not being represented because I've generally found people pretty willing to call any one of us or contact any one of us regard sure. regardless of which district they're in yep um, so I I would be okay with leaving it open you know but you my only see. thought is there there's no vote in that seat and so that's the one thing about even if they said hey John this is what I think about what's going on over there they still don't get a vote so I don't know. I think it'd be easier to have somebody sit in there or get appointed or. When would that, how long would that process take? <clears throat> well, well, then the after, well, when yeah. we advertised it, and I think we did it because there's a snowstorm, I remember, with, when we filled Rich's yep. seat because one of the candidates was stuck right. in there. But I think the no, from the end of November, it was about three weeks. I think we had a, a two-week process where they could get names in and then we sent them out and then also it's about three, swift, weeks, three yeah. to four weeks well, I'll throw one other thought out okay. because I think what can sometimes happen not that you couldn't have gotten elected if you had <laughs> appointed you <laughs> but it I does think, put an advantage yeah. I think what does sometimes happen is you put that person at an advantage and it's for such a short period of time and yet they would come to the spring election as an incumbent Coming. chosen by us yep and so I think from, from that vantage point, I'd much rather leave the seat open for a couple months, let District 4 people know they're welcome to contact any of us. I don't think we see any wildly controversial items coming forward. And let the voters decide who's going to sit in that seat. Okay. It's too close to the election, so I would not agree okay. with appointing. Rich, you've never been any, no. <laughs> it's not what I meant. He no, got I elected afterwards. Any thoughts? Randy, Rich? It's been this council's track to always appoint a vacant seat for the due diligence of government. Uh, I could go either way, I guess. I don't have a strong opinion one way. But having said that, I think we should probably fill the seat for the representation. Okay. When is paperwork due for? The first of December, correct, Nancy? It can go yes. out and then it's due the, the first yeah. Monday, and, first Tuesday in January? Is that correct? January 7th. January 7th. And we have to decide by the 27th if we're going to run or not. Of December. December. The, the incumbents, correct. Yeah. That's when the notification on non candidacy is due. And your circulation can start December, December 1st. 1st. Through the 7th of January. Well, I, you know, we, I guess we don't have to decide tonight. Uh, it's up to you folks. Uh, you're the council, and I think it's the council's responsibility to make a decision on what uh, you guys split. want to do, so. Well, I think we should take a vote on it. Okay. And move it forward. One way or the other needs okay. to be. So is someone willing to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, someone to the District 4 seat. Okay. Is well, there a second? No I'll second. Do that with it not, I mean, it's just a communication. Oh, item. yeah, I think okay. so. I'll second it. I'm so confused. Do you want to say following the procedure that has been done in the past? Uh, yes. So we'll look at the timetable and we can get it on the on the website and so you're probably looking at the first meeting in November, just given the timing of it. Yeah. All. And so you appoint. Don't want to do it later than that, really. So you appoint the first week in November, and then they have to start circulating papers December first. It's. I'm just saying the timing. I think is really 
So we had a, not a motion and a second. We right? do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can talk some more about it. I, 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 agree, I agree with, I'm very split because I agree with the need to, to idea to fill the seat, but I also feel obviously as I expressed along with Lori that we are so close to election, it just seems, I don't know. It feels like we're handpicking someone for a couple months who we then put at an advantage. Versus a year and a half where we needed to. We really of, needed to fill the seat. Yeah, yes. I don't know. That, that is basically what happened with my seat though. I got appointed, I think it was in November. December. And I had to have papers fill out. As a matter of fact, one of the questions from the council was, have you applied for uh, you were appointed election. in December? Yeah, yes. it was the first meeting. It was early December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But wasn't that, didn't you have another year? No. No, it was the it's following year. I had to have. Mayor's election. off. I, I had actually. District is a different I, term. I had actually filled out papers to run before I was appointed. Oh. <laughs> Why well, I, I thought you had a whole other year. No. no. The mayor's position had a year and a half, but 6th District is run opposite the mayor. Oh, that's and right. I, yeah. And I, I don't want to make excuses for that, but I mean, I think it was because there was so much upheaval and the mayor's seat was open and I think there was a desire on the council to get consistency and just to get the seats. Could pick the person that Kurt ran against. <laughs> What's that? You could pick the person that uh, ran in District 4 as a second. Oh, they, they, you'll they, see who puts in. Yeah, you'll have the people interest. will have to put in if they're interested yeah. then they yeah. can. I, I guess my point was if somebody else ran for that seat at the same time is that that has no Doesn't matter. Nope. Okay. And I don't think he had an opponent. Nope. Yeah, he did. Dennis O'Connell. Oh, that's right. Yes, Dennis but, ran. You know, Dennis or whoever else is in that district could put their name in, and mm -hmm. if you decided to go that route. And basically, what it is, they had a one-page resume. And Rich know. ended up having an opponent, someone who was interested in the appointment. I think there were three, four. There was a primary that year when he did yes, run. There was a primary. Yeah. Because I think three or four of the people that. So right. the logic behind that is we could appoint, but yet the people still, still made the final go, decision. Yeah. Still that was a narrow race too, if I recall. Yes, it was. Still got to earn your keep. No, there wasn't on your first election. There was the mayor was opposite. Right? No, but when he ran, when he no, ran against that, next April, there were four candidates. Oh I yes, think we had a primary. Right. right. Yeah. We we love spring primaries, so we do. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion on it? We have a motion and a second to uh, appoint someone. I'm willing to listen to any or everybody get their two cents in. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. We'll, we'll okay. follow the procedure yep. and. Uh, so I would anticipate probably we'll plan on November 5th then. So we'll maybe have finance earlier and then depending on how many candidates you have, like six, start at 6.30 with the interviews then. Okay. Uh, next item is uh, future agenda items from council members. Anything that you want to be on? I, I don't know. We've talked about this a while ago, but that uh, pavement on Locust between 1st and 2nd Street needs to be addressed. Uh, it's not, it's still where they put the, in the alley. It, it hasn't been fi fixed yet, Tom. I don't know. If Thomas? It's been way too long for that to be open and cut like that. I mean, let's get it paved. It, the, is that ours or is it uh that project was a water project that was uh, there was a water main put in from locust street to okay. behind dibbos can you uh, check with tim is it check with him and and gary zapp i've asked gary several times he said it's going to be done shortly but like randy said i think they actually opened that street up probably before the 4th of July. Yep. Okay. I, I saw them out there working on it again last week, so I don't know if there was something else. I think the curb is in now, and, and I guess what they were waiting for was uh, one of the businesses uh, wanted to put in a storm sewer from his business out in okay. into the street. And I know that's been completed, and the curb and gutter's been replaced, you know, in so. All right, we, we'll put it on future agenda. And I just want to follow up. Yep, okay. I'll, Any, I'll do that. Anybody else? Can I communicate what, what not? For not an agenda item, but just a communication. Sure. Um, communication and or items. I wasn't going to communicate this, but apparently I still need to clear up rumors. I am still living in District 2. I have moved to the Lighthouse subdivision, which is in District 2. If anyone needs my address, they can contact City Hall. Okay. Thank you. Um, city Attorney, anything for City Administrator? No. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Is there a second? 
All in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much.